Good afternoon. First, I'd like to thank uh, Samsung family, Prime Minister, and the Samsung Prize Committee for giving me this great honor. Uh, my talk today will be on uh, bio-based production of uh, fuels and chemicals. So as we all know, we have been relying on production of uh, many fuels, chemicals, and materials from uh, fossil resources. Now, obviously, due to the climate change and the limited fossil resources coming up in the future, obviously, we want to make sustainable system for the production of chemicals, fuels, and materials. For that, we cannot just feed your dog with some food and ask for fuel or chemicals. You have to use some ethically sound and safe system that's collectively called microorganisms because they don't have brain and you also eat them all the time. Now, when you look at the uh, metabolism of these microorganisms, they are quite complicated, like our metabolism in our body. And if you look at all these dots and chemicals shown here, they are theoretically the uh, natural chemicals you can produce by engineering microorganisms. However, you are not limited to producing only these natural chemicals. You can design new enzymes, which are catalysts, and also new metabolic pathways for the production of even non-natural chemicals as well. How do you do that? Well, if you have a target product here, you have to find the optimal pathway route towards the increased production of your product while you are limiting the production of so-called byproducts. Since this is too complicated, just traditional metabolic engineering, which can be defined as purposeful modification of cellular network to accomplish your goal, such as enhanced production of desired chemical, is not too easy. So we want to speed up the entire process through the integration of systems biology, synthetic biology, and even evolutionary engineering, and which we term as systems metabolic engineering. How do you do that? My uh, education background is chemical engineering. So you always set with a project target. So that is what you want to produce. You set the goal and then you look around and what is the most inexpensive carbon source you can feed. And then now uh, you have to select the host strain, which in my case is typically bacteria, but you can use yeast and fungi or even plants if you want. And then you have to reconstruct the uh, metabolic pathway so that the desired chemical can be synthesized in cells. And then obviously you want to produce them in large amounts to high concentration with high productivity. So product tolerance level should be enhanced as well. And then uh, here's a hardcore metabolic engineering step where you're looking at the cell at the entirety and design the cell based on a lot of different tools that have been developed over the years. At the end of the day, obviously you need to bring the product to your hands, so you want to produce them. You produce them through fermentation. Uh, of course, you start with a lab scale fermentation, but you can go for the demo plant scale through the Apollo scale fermentation. As you can see from these arrow directions, these are not unidirectional. Sometimes you do the fermentation and you find some problems, you go back to the lab and develop new strains and bring it back to the fermentation. Of course, at the end, you have to recover and purify. Using the uh, systems metabolic engineering approaches, we have been producing a lot of different fuels and chemicals over the years. Let me just highlight some of them. First one is I'm proud to uh, say this is the Heim Weizmann's process. Israeli first president, and he developed this clostridial fermentation process where you feed glucose, xylose, and all these carbon sources, and then bacterium named Clostridium acidobutylicum, which is Weissmann strain, that will convert them first into acetic acid and butyric acid. Because cells are producing so much acid, the gross medium becomes acidic, and then cells have evolved to uptake these through the use of CoA transferase enzyme and then convert them to butanol, acetone, and ethanol in approximate ratio of 6 to 3 to 1. Now, butanol is fuel. Ethanol well, is not a uh, good fuel. It's a good drink, but you can use them as a fuel if you want. Acetone is not. 
So my student wanted to kill acetone production by metabolic engineering by shutting it down. However, unfortunately, due to the complex regulatory system, butanol production also went down. So instead, we further engineered by knocking out one of the acid-forming pathway and then introduction of secondary alcohol dehydrogenase and converted acetone into isopropanol. Now at the end of the fermentation, you produce butanol, isopropanol, and ethanol mixture, which is great fuel mixture. Of course, we further engineered to utilize so-called hot channel, that is, instead of going through acidogenic phase first, followed by solventogenic phase, we just straight go down to solventogenic phase, which is now uh, under company evaluation. We also reported the production of non-natural fuel. Here, non-natural means that microorganisms on Earth cannot produce gasoline by itself. And what we did was we basically engineered fatty acid metabolism of bacteria so that they can synthesize shorter carbon length fatty acids first, which is suitable for gasoline application. And then we introduced several pathways so that these short chain fatty acids can be converted to short chain hydrocarbon mixtures. Furthermore, more recently, we tried to produce biodiesel. Obviously, biodiesel nowadays are produced using either plant oils or animal fats. And um, many of our plant oils obviously are uh, bringing food versus fuel issue. So what we wanted to do was we want to produce biodiesel from glucose. And by the way, glucose is the most abundant carbohydrate uh, that can be obtained from lignocellulogic, which we don't eat. So can we produce biodiesel from glucose? Well, we found this bacterium can do the job, which is called rhodococcus. It accumulates large amounts of triacylglycerol, so there is a lipid. And as you can see from this uh, transmission electron micrograph, basically bacterial cell is full of lipid. And how we did that? Well, we first uh, optimized the metabolic pathway and fermentation condition so that we can produce, here in this graph is 83 gram per liter of triacylglycerol, but we now produce about 100 gram per liter of triacylglycerol by fat batch culture. And then we introduced intracellular lipase to degrade TAG into lipid, uh, sorry, fatty acids. And that was uh, shown by these uh, top three pictures where the control strain versus you allow the cells accumulate large amounts of lipid and then you introduce a lipase and then you get the uh, uh, fatty acid you want. And then you also establish a new pathway that allows formation of ethanol, and then using wax esterase, now you can convert them to diesel. So you can now produce biodiesel from glucose by fermentation. Let me switch a gear to the chemicals and materials production. And obviously plastics is a big issue nowadays because of the single-use plastics and accumulation of large amounts of plastics. Especially microplastics are attacking us and attacking our health. And if you Look at the uh, study uh, reported by World Wildlife Fund and the University of Newcastle, Australia. This is the question I want to ask you. How much microplastic do we eat? Well, actually, this bottle of water, I don't want to claim that this bottle has microplastics in it, but the study showed that a lot of drinking bottles actually contain them. So they calculate that we almost eat one credit card per week. And if you multiply by four, you're basically eating toothbrush per month. Obviously, most of them will go out, but some of the nano-sized plastics can actually circulate and cause some problems. So in these particular cases, obviously, you need to produce some biodegradable, non-hazardous plastics. And in this case, what we did was you basically establish a pathway that can condense two molecules of acetyl-CoA and convert it to poly 3 hydroxyburate And how much we produce? After long uh, years of study, you're looking at single E. coli cell, which usually is a cylindrical shape. Now, due to the heavy accumulation of plastics as a, a distinct granule polymers by fermentation as well. However, this is not the end of the story. There are a lot of different polymers we need. Plastics, by definition, should not degrade. That's why we produce plastics and use them. For example, if you made an electric car, which is the main theme of this conference, and if you use the plastics, and if they degrade, who's going to buy? So plastics are supposed to be non-degradable, but should be very nicely recycled, of course, for the environment. Now there are polyesters, polyamides, polyurethanes, polyisoprenoids. A lot of polymers need to be made for uh, meeting our demands. But unfortunately, biotechnology cannot deliver everything. 
So in this case, instead of producing polymer, you produce monomers by fermentation and then use the chemical approach of processing. In this particular case, you can produce 4-carbon dicarboxylic acid, which is succinic acid, by a bacterium isolated from ruminant Korean cow, very efficient uh, productivity and also high titer. But we also produce uh, diamine, which is needed for making engineering plastics, which is, of course, suitable for many compartments in the car. Now, for this, obviously, you have to engineer the metabolic pathway, knocking out all the negative regulatory circuits, and cut down the byproduct formation, and eventually, we were able to produce all these things. And we have collected all these works we have done and others done in recent years, and then we mapped them on the uh, metabolic pathways. What you're looking at are uh, the chemicals currently you can produce through bio-based route. Of course, this is not the only one because the metabolic pathway does not end here. So you can go down and here's TCA cycle and then a lot of precursors in the cell can be used to make valuable chemicals whether they are natural or non-natural. In conclusion, bio-based fuels and chemicals and materials is not an option anymore. It is essential for future sustainable chemical industry. With that, I want to thank all my group members who are presently staying with me, or those not shown here because they already graduated. And thank you very much for your attention.